Adobe. Once a gal was screaming, Adobe. Once a gal to call his own. Is she blonde? Is she tall? Is she dark? Is she small? Is she any kind of dreamboat at all? No matter. It's hers and hers alone. Adobe. Okay. Okay, I know what you're gonna say. Dobie Gillis is in love again, right? Well, you're wrong. I'm not in love again. I'm in love at last. I bid farewell to the aimless days of flitting from one girl to another, like a bee buzzing from flower to flower. From now on, only one girl's gonna get stung. And what a girl she is. Pearl Arnold. Dear, sweet Pearl. The very thought of her fills my heart with sweet, tender memories. She makes me think of lovely soft music. Maynard! Maynard! Gee, you look great. Well, you can't be here. You're in the army. No, good buddy. They kind of let me go. You mean a furlough? No, that doesn't sound like it. A, a discharge? Yeah, that was in there somewhere. Well, what kind of discharge? They called it a hardship discharge. Well, whose hardship? Yours? Your parents? No. The armies. Huh? Are you going back? I don't know, man. They said, like, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> it's good to have you back, Maynard. You look great. Wonderful. Yeah, you look sick. <laughs> no, I, I'm fine. It's just that, well, I'm in love. Yeah, I was right. I can't expect you to understand. Not until you've been in love yourself. Oh, no. You don't catch me traveling that route. Just wait. Your fingers will caress hers. The world will stand still. You'll hear gentle music like an angel strumming a heavenly harp. Listen. <laughs> oh, you got it bad. I don't hear nothing. Hey, what say we ain't go down to the record store for some platters with a real beat, huh? Ah, not me, thanks. I've got a date with her. Gee, I hope you better real soon. Oh, I'm sorry. It was all my fault. Oh, it's broken. Your ankle? No, my radio. I got two ankles. Please, can I have it fixed for you? Oh, and it played real cool until... You're sure you're not hurt? You're very sweet not to be angry with me about this. You're very nice to be so very nice about this. Dolby. Pearl, my sweet. Dolby, my love. Yeah, I picked these just for you. Oh, they're beautiful. Herbert, you just don't give Dobie a chance to prove himself. He's really a fine boy. A boy what? Winnie, he doesn't know the meaning of the word work. Money, allowance, spending, these words he knows. So why can't he understand work? He's too busy discovering life. Put yourself in his place. He's young. Let him put himself in my place. I'm old. Is it so wrong for me to want my son to pitch in and help? My back aches. My arches are collapsing. Why, Herbert, you're not old. You're just as strong and handsome as the day we were married. Baloney. What? Baloney, Mrs. Schultz's daughter. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me, Juliet, but Romeo must away to the freezer and grind some meat. Pardon me such sweet sorrow, but Mrs. Schultz's drowned round won't wait until tomorrow. Hi, Mom. Oh, hello, dear. Boy, what a day. I have finally discovered the true meaning of life. Well, that's a very interesting discovery, dear. What's her name? Pearl Arnold, and I have a date with her tonight. Say, 
Mom, do you think Dad will let me go out? He's been doing a lot of yelling lately. Oh, that's just an act. He really loves you very much. Just prove that you love him. Maybe if you were a little more helpful around the store. Well, I am helpful. I do everything he tells me, like uh, always saying thank you to the customers and uh, closing the freezer door if I find it open. That's fine, dear. Your father will be very... <laughs> Toby, that was you that closed the freezer door? It sure was. He'll like that, huh? <laughs> Mama. I got to kill that boy. I just got to. The worst part is he won't let me go out on a date for a whole month. I can't see her tonight. Hey, why don't you like to sneak out? Nah, my dad's a cinch to stick his head in there to make sure I'm in bed. Looks like Doomsville for you and the chick. Yeah. Wait, maybe I could dig up somebody to take my place under the covers. Crazy. One bunch of lumps looks like any other bunch of lumps. Yeah, you never know the difference. Man, we're winging. Yeah, be there by 8.30. Me? Oh, hold it, Daddy. Oh, I can't. Under the covers, you'll look like any other bunch yeah, of lumps. Yeah, sure, but I, I, I... You what, pal? I, I, I like shoot up my mouth too much. <laughs> What's that? Snacks. The only thing I'd eat since lunch was dinner. I wish I could show my appreciation for what you're doing for me tonight. Yeah, I know, Way. Yeah? Ask your mother for some mustard. I forgot mine. I can't do that. They're not supposed to know you're here. Good thing I brought my extra ketchup. Just make sure you're in bed in case my father comes in. Well, why wait? <laughs> well, I guess you're right, Winnie. I know I'm right. You just sit down, Mr. Obie, and have a good man-to-man -man talk. I'm sure everything will be cleared up in a jiffy. Let the boy know that you care about his problems. Make him feel that you're his friend. All right, Winnie, all right, I'll do it. When? One of these days. Which one? This one. this might be a good time for you and I to have a little man-to-man -man talk. <laughs> I uh, want you to feel free to come to me if anything is wrong. If you're in trouble, just say the word and I'll be more than happy to help. You better have the school doctor look into this nervous condition of yours. After all, it may be the company you keep. You know, that uh, spooky clown Maynard would give anybody the creeps. <laughs> well, I feel our little talk has been very helpful. Let's shake on us having a better understanding between us in the future, huh? <laughs> You kept moaning and yelling, Pearl, Pearl. Yeah, it was only the greatest. Did your father say anything this morning? Not a word. He just sat there at the breakfast table staring at me and licking his hand. What are you going to do? Yeah. Pal, now it's my turn to do something for you. Just name it. Well, I... No, what's the use? No, go on, tell me. You see, I... No, she wouldn't go for me anyhow. <laughs> she? Maynard, you met a girl. Yeah, Harpsville. Yeah, Harpsville. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, I told you. Hey, have you taken her out yet? No. I was kind of figuring maybe, you... no, it wouldn't do any good. Well, you want me to show you how to make a big hit with her? 
That's the notion I was kicking around, but no, nah, even that wouldn't help. Sure it would. I'll coach you. I'll teach you all the tricks I know about the female of the species. Oh, negative. Chicks like to be sweet talking. I'm not built for that kind of action. Let's drop it. No. Now, I'll show you what to say and how to say it. I'd be like batting out of my league. Oh, uh, no, not with your Cyrano de Bergerac at your side. Cyrano de Hoosierac? De Bergerac. The Frenchman we studied about in literature class with a long nose. He taught his friend how to make love to a girl, and it worked like that. Yeah, I must have slept that semester. Yeah, his friend was kind of slow, see? Yeah, nothing personal, Maynard. Yeah. And Cyrano coached him from the sidelines. He told him all the romantic things to say. It let him in on the secrets of high-class woo pitching. Made a real lover out of a washout. He... Uh, <laughs> nothing personal, Maynard. Do you think I could do it? Absolutely. Yeah, maybe she, you know, no, nah, I love it. Oh, not if I help you. We'll have that poor girl ape over you. Yeah? Yeah, you'll have to fight her off. Man. Oh, no, nah, why well, kid myself? I'm just not the romantic type. Now, Maynard, don't argue. I'm taking over. Now, where do we make contact with our target? She goes to the mall shop every day after school. We'll rendezvous there at H hour. Maynard, old boy, for every man there's a woman, and we're finally going to make yours step up and face the music. <laughs> Uh, nothing personal? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two hot fight Sundays. Yeah, make mine a double. I got the jumps. Doby, what's the way they cut out and forget this whole deal, huh? The chick's not gonna have eyes for me. Now, think positive thoughts, Maynard. I won't let you down. I just hope... She... What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> you mean that's her? No. Al? Cyrano? thinker. He's kind of an inspiration to me, which, which is why I come here to think whenever I have a problem, like now. You see, I've been doing a lot of thinking about me and Pearl and Maynard, and I've reached an important decision. I'm going to give up thinking. I mean, what good does it do? Here, I've been thinking my head down to the bone for an hour now, and I still can't decide between love and friendship. It's like that fellow Cyrano I was telling Maynard about. You know, the, uh, the romantic Frenchman with a long nose. He promised to help his backward friend make time with a girl. And then it turns out that he's in love with the same girl. But what can he do? He's slick and suave and he's a smash with the women. But he's also very loyal and unselfish. A prince of a fellow. Kind of like, uh, well, let's face it. Me. Dear friend. Dear friend. <laughs> Cyrano, when the fair pearl arrives, you must like show me how to woo her, else I am lost. Have no fear, dear friend. I am at thy side. Ah, the lady cometh. We are alone. Speak to me of love. Dear one, my thoughts of you like saw as if on the wings of a dove. Oh, yes, speak more, I pray you. Lovely Pearl, your name is to my heart as the golden pealing of a bell. Yes, yes, go on. <laughs> your grace is sheer music, a hymn to like all beauty. Yes, yes. To me, your voice is a cheesy gargling of a crowing scream. Uh, uh, the easy flowing of a gurgling stream. You have made me the happiest of women. Let us away to the arbor. Far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. 
Somehow I've got to get rid of Pearl. For Maynard. For my buddy. Don't be my own. Pearl, I... Now, Pearl, please, please restrain yourself. Something's the matter. Well, yeah. You don't like my new hairdo. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have let my sister fool with it. She's been practicing on the poodle. Oh, your hair, it's, it's moonlight. My perfume is too strong? Oh, no, no, your perfume, it, it's ambrosia. My lipstick's the wrong color. Your lips? Roses. Moonlight? Ambrosia? Roses? What's the matter with that? Well, I... I, I... Yes, doll? Well, you, you're just not my type. You're kidding. In love like ours, it burns brightly for an instant, then poof. Poof? Poof. You sang a different tune last night. Yes, but I've matured since then. You, you see, I belong to all girls. I can't be stuck with one. Stuck! I cannot be shackled to one nest. I must be free to fly with the winds. Well, flap off, buzzard. Nobody's stuck with me. But please, Pearl, no tears. Someday, somewhere, you'll find the someone for you. Oh, who stretches your hats for you, Buster? Gee, what a kooky character. Yes, it is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. Mr. Gillis, I was in the mall shop with Dobie. He liked up and faded into Nowheresville. My, my. You know where he is? No. Maybe he'll stay there, huh? Sure you don't know? Yeah. Positive? Positive. Absolutely, positively, definitely? Okay, okay, I know where he is. He just left for the North Pole on a dog sled pulled by three chihuahuas and a chipmunk. Did he say when he'd be back? <laughs> Dobe, I couldn't figure where you snuck off to. Well, I had some soul searching to do, but I worked things out. Maynard, old friend, I realize now that your friendship is my most prized possession. In this shaky world, your loyalty is my tower of strength. Gee, I, I like don't know what to say. Don't like say anything. Kiss him. Dove, are you gonna... Well, help you like you said? Well, I promised, didn't I? We'll have that girl falling all over you. Crazy. Now, first, you've got to know her name. It's Essential. Essential? What a beautiful name. If... <laughs> no, her name is Pearl Arnold. How do you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen her around school. Yeah, I even found out her phone number so you can call her. Oh, no, please, Dope. No, when I talked to a female, my mind was like out to lunch. Maynard, I went to a lot of trouble to set this up. Now, you're going through it. One of us is going to be happy. Now, just tell her your name, say you've admired her from afar for a long time, and can you meet her for a soda in the malt shop tonight? <laughs> Fear not. I'm at thy side. Yeah, I'm with you, pal. The answer, the answer. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Slowly, calmly. But I... Hello? This is Maynard Krebs. I've admired you from a long time from afar. Would you like to meet me for like a soda in the malt shop tonight? No kidding, would you? See how easy it was? That was the father. You went to call her. I... <laughs> oh, well, you needed a dry run. Yeah, now when the chick herself starts gabbing, boy. It's her, it's her. Do just what you did before. Hello, Pearl? This is... It's slowly, calmly. Slowly, calmly. <laughs> Maynard Cribs. Maynard Cribs. You know, I've admired you from afar for a long time. I've admired you from afar a long time. Uh, the, the malt shop, a soda. The malt shop, a soda tonight. Will she? Will you? You will? She will. Good, good. You'll meet her there at 8 o'clock and introduce yourself. Good. You'll meet her there at 8 o'clock and introduce yourself. <laughs> Wasn't so tough, was it? Breezeville. But you must be worried about something, dear, the way you're gulping down those almonds. I always eat lots of almonds. Don't you usually take them out of the shells first? 
<laughs> now, dear, why don't you tell Mother what's bothering you? Mom, my lips are sealed. I can only say that at this very moment, events are transpiring which may change my entire life. Meters are so... Mom, would you excuse us, please? Why, certainly, dear. Thank you very much, Mother. Thank you. Maynard, you're supposed to be with Pearl. I chickened out. I looked in the window and saw her sitting there. Man, like my backbone flabbed up. Now, you get back there before she walks out on you. I can't go that route alone, Daddy. -o. Come with me, please. No, Maynard, it's impossible. You took me this far, though. You're killing me down now. <laughs> Maynard, I can't let you down. Come on, let's go. Pal, you're the greatest pal a pal ever had for a pal. Yes, sir, me, pal. Oh, you must be Pearl. Well, this is Maynard Crabs, the fellow who called you. Uh, I'm his friend, Dobie Gillis. <laughs> Waiter, three sweet and sour surprises. Ask her to dance. Huh? You dance. I'd love to. Huh? Well, I, I'm, I'm in for Dave. <laughs> Dobie, I think it's time for an explanation. Well, you see, Maynard was shy about meeting you, so I came along. Oh? After all, he, he's my best friend, and I want him to be happy. I see. I, I mean, you're a fortunate girl to have such a high-type fella in love with you. Dobie, now I understand what a noble, unselfish thing that you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. He, he's fine and honest and sincere and... He... You were willing to sacrifice your love for me to bring happiness to your poor friend. Well, he'd be your devoted slave. I knew you were still in love with me, darling. <laughs> Maynard, I was just telling... About you. Oh, knock it off, cousin. I caught what was going on. Well, nothing's going on, Maynard. Oh, when you two dance together, you're like swinging in the same key. Oh, you're imagining things. Man, I can hear those two harps wailing loud and clear. Now, Maynard, you've got to have confidence in yourself. He's the solid, trustworthy kind of fellow a girl wants. But you got class. He's warm and considerate. You're what the chicks go for. He's sensitive with a gentle, understanding soul. You ooze with the old charm. He's one. <laughs> don't need me. You've got each other. You know, I'm sorry I don't for losing your girl for you. Nah, girls. Nothing but trouble. They bug me. They really do. Me too, man. Who needs girls? Yeah, look at the rich, full life you can have without girls. Yeah, you can listen to jazz. And go to movies. And play baseball. Football. And hockey. Basketball and tennis. And golf and Monopoly. And you can watch Maynard. television and go Maynard. bowling and swimming. Maynard, huh? There's one thing missing. Girls. Girls. Hi, Mom. Good morning, dear. Feeling better? I sure am. Mom, you're looking at a new Dobie Gillis. A pity. I was just getting used to the old one. Ah, I mean it. My days of shallow girl chasing youth are gone. Forever. Well, your father will certainly be glad to hear that. Ah, he'll see it. By the way, where is Dad? In the meat freezer. Oh, well, when... <laughs> freezer. Dan? <laughs> Mom? <laughs> Bye, Mom. My boy, I just gotta. Once 
a gal is dreamy, Doby. Want a gal is creamy, Doby. Want a gal to call his own. Is she blonde? Is she tall? Is she dark? Is she small? Is she any kind of dream one at all? No matter, he's hers and hers. 